Hi again. We are here for the third and last uh, conference of the day in this two by deliver uh, room in at Top and Expo Virtual Experience. So uh, feel free, uh, John, if you want to come here, feel free. I'm really happy uh, you came here on the stage. So feel free if you want to come here again. I'm I'm really happy too. So right now uh, we will receive uh, Pierre Giorgio Lucidi. How are you, Pierre Giorgio? Just coming right now on, on the stage with us. Hi, Hi Philip. How are you? How are you? Very well, so, you? Yeah, yeah, we are here we are for the third day of Open Expo virtual experience, and tomorrow we have the last uh, last day tomorrow afternoon European time or tomorrow morning uh, America or Latin America. Uh, Time. So, Pierre Giorgio, you are a member of the Apache Software Foundation, and yeah. right now you will talk. Yeah, <laughs> we saw that on on the T-shirt, and yeah. you will talk about embracing open source approach for your adaptive digital transformation. So, you have a uh, forty to forty-five minutes, and then people can ask questions during this time uh, through the Q and A, through uh, if you can raise your hand. Or, uh, John, you can come here on the stage and uh, ask directly uh, Pierre Giorgio anything. So thank you very much to everyone to be here today with us. And the stage is for you, Pierre Giorgio. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Philip. Here we have so just sharing my, my screen. So let's start on this uh, uh, Tricky journey because digital transformation is never easy. Anyway, just two words about me. Um, I'm a member of the Apache Software Foundation and um, I work at Thai Solutions as a digital transformation specialist. So I work every day on projects trying to migrate and build new uh, digital transformation platforms and solutions uh, based on open source technologies. And uh, during my spare time, I'm trying to continue to contribute in open source communities also. And uh, I'm also a contributor of some um, best practices for, for ISO uh, on behalf of the 3D PDF consortium. So um, and I'm trying to follow this path also on, uh, on best practices. And um, during this talk, I, I'll try to summarize some, uh, some good practices that you can follow for, for your projects. So let, let's start to take a look at the, at the agenda that I had high level. Um, we will see some um, main challenges of digital transformations, and we will see some similarities with, with, with the open source ecosystem. So we, we will try to bring some uh, good practices from uh, open source communities um, for, for managing the project that could be very, very useful. We will see some um, international standards summarized in an ECM program strategy. So we will see that there is some kind of toolkits that you can follow for uh, approaching any uh, digital transformation project. And we will see how to adapt it, technologically speaking, um, depending on your um, functionalities, your requirements. So we'll try to, um, we will try to, to give some very basic examples of, of how an architecture can, can be um, improved um, step by step. So typically, the digital transformation project um, includes some, some kind of complexity because you have different um, different software, different uh, technologies, but also different processes. And uh, here we have a cri the critical stuff related to the business, the business core for um, some specific enterprises need. So we have the content, the process, and typically you, you need some kind of monitoring services that allows you to take good decision to allow the, the, the company to, to, to have the, the to, to follow the right path because you can take the good decision looking at data, at the current data, real-time data and so on. We have a, a, another challenge, the harmonization between um, your internal skills, because you typically you want to to evolve and you want to improve your, your platform with uh, new uh, adopting new new platforms or simply um, in trying to um, bring some benefits from new departments of, of, your, of your company and try to bring the new department in the, in the digital 
uh, in a digital project. And this means that you have to talk with stakeholders, different departments, so it's not easy. And typically you have to, um, to, have to, to, to collect some requirements and you have different scenarios, you have different departments. And the typical issues could be the communication among all the departments and uh, some underestimations that you can have um, and wrong technologies that, that was introduced in the past, but uh, after some time, these technologies now are some kind of, of rocks that it's very hard to, to replace. So the, this is the current uh, uh, challenges that, that any project uh, in, a, in, in companies that we are living at the moment. And uh, taking a look at the open source ecosystem and the open source vision, um, we, we will see that the open source project or the, an open source community typically has a vision exactly as a digital transformation project. So you typically need to define new requirements. You have to try to give some milestones to resolve conflicts between, I mean, between functionalities that you want to implement or not, or how you want to implement that functionality in the project. And you have to keep healthy the project itself in terms of, uh, um, for example, having a clean code in, in the project or simply try to simplify some functionalities to users. Uh, we have a different population. So we could have users, contributors, and we have different roles because also in our digital transformation project, we, we could have a manager, we could have an architect, we could have a user. So we have the same exactly issues for, that we see in open source projects. We have different deliverables. We have the software, the documentation, we have a roadmap because the digital transformation project uh, is a never ending project because it is con continue to be evolved with the, uh, with the company, with the enterprises. So typically, and, and, and the company could have some organizational change, for example, a change strategy itself. So you could have a roadmap in terms of what you want to be covered in the future. We, if your core business will change in the future, the pro, your digital transformation project probably should be changed in the future. So we should follow the, the, the organizational change strategy. Uh, you you need some support because you have uh, the users adoption also you have internal users you have developers you need you have to cover security fixes and security patches and uh, the the critical part here is again the communication because in the open source projects and communities we have a continuous sharing policy we have a voting system for example and uh, I, 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 I typically am referring to the, the Apache Software Foundation, Apache communities, for example. And you, you have to be inclusive. So you have to try to bring the right people in the project. Uh, and you have to choose some champions, typically. And we will also talk on this later. And you have to spreading out new features, new functionalities with your internal portal or internal services. So we have some kind of a lot of similarities with the open source ecosystem. So the digital transformation project and the, the approach to the project itself could be absolutely um, similar for how open source communities are actually managing the project. I'm referring to the Apache way in, in specific. So we have some toolkits. We have some best practices that helps you to define your best practices, your guidelines for your project. And uh, the ECM program strategy is a toolkit, you know, created mixing some effort by uh, AIM uh, practices, and the, uh, and the Mac2 Mac2 is an open source framework, an open source methodology framework that uh, gives you some hints on uh, on specific type of projects that you are uh, building. So, um, and in this way, you you can collect some uh, practices and uh, specific documentation um, artifacts that allows you to approach to the project in a progressive way, adaptive way. I, 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 I would say agile, but I mean, it, it's some kind of different stuff. 
And, uh, and also these practices are based on international standards. And uh, I will share with you in the last slide some references about the exhaustive standards where all this stuff was written and uh, suggested. Why we should follow the international standards? Because inside these papers, there are a lot of experiences shared in. So typically, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. You want to create something and avoid all the issues that probably um, was reported by these documents. And the typical issues are always the same. I mean, the big issues, the blocking issues, the typically bottlenecks. And uh, unfortunately, the typically bottlenecks are not related only on the, on the technologies, but uh, on typically on uh, some misunderstanding on requirements. Um, and um, I mean, code is easy, people are hard. So I mean, this sentence is explained actually the real problem that we are leaving for making new digital transformation projects because we have a lot of bricks, we have a lot of technologies, but there is, so it, it's rare to find customers that have the vision clear and uh, a path defined very well. And uh, typically, the, the path should be um, built uh, during the, the, the project itself. And uh, this can be done using uh, a POC approach, uh, iterating some sprints, in, uh, developing different sprints of uh, um, functionalities and uh, or migrating different kind of documents, for example, on different departments to try to uh, address and steer your project in the right way in, in, in time. So we have different phases. Typically, I mean, this is not waterfall. <laughs> it's not a waterfall scheme, but it's just some phases that could be iterated different times. So typically, you have to um, bring and uh, try to um, make the management. Um, you have to share the management. Uh, with the management or the, or the approach, and you have to ask them which could be the vision, which could be the critical issues. Then should be a business assessment, a technology assessment. Then could be a first initial development uh, um, phase, then the rollout, the training, and uh, the final phase that could be absolutely perfect. I mean, could be why not contribute back in the open source uh, software and open source communities then? That could be absolutely great. And typically, this means that the company itself uh, could have uh, some kind of open source program office that could allow to, to bring internally a lot of uh, knowledge. And uh, also, contributing back in the open source stuff could be all absolutely a, a, a good thing for the public good. And, uh, and uh, I mean, it could be also funny. In terms of international standards, so we, um, I talk about MIC2, and the MIC2 explain exactly this kind of uh, um, this kind of work that you can plan for for your project. So you, you could have big two, the, the, the first needs of phases very big, with some kind of assessment that could be related to the business and another part of the technology itself, and then you can simply. Mm, have a continuous improvement phase where you could have different incremental phases of development and also to um, decide which phase can be uh, improved and for different departments. So I would like to underline um, every time this, uh, uh, this, uh, this phase because uh, the, the digital transformation project can be started uh, in four different departments at the same time. So during the first phase, typically you want to define the, and will help the customer or your company to define metrics, KPIs. So this is your business strategy and you, you need to know how, which are the current issues, for example, um, which are the goals for, for this project. If you have currently uh, a specific platform, um, you, 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 have, you, you need to know about the, the new metrics. So for example, this process should be uh, terminated uh, until 
seven days, for example, or you need just four hours for complete this process, for example. And um, you also need to know about the organizational change strategies. So if so, so some departments have different strategies you need to know because the platform should follow exactly the same the same strategy um you you need also to identify champions some people that internally in the company can help you to uh, identify other champions and the champions is typically some some people that helps you on uh, testing the platform identify other stakeholders for example someone that knows very well the business core for each department or for a specific department you could have different champions for example and then you 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 have to collect some uh, information about your user experience the current user experience and we, we, which could be the, the the better user experience for example if some people should interact with the system with a different device or some metadata some data are wrong actually and they have to to, to, to see different properties for, for contents, for example. In terms of business assessment, you, you have to involve uh, the, the stick, stakeholders. And typically, it could be um, useful to create some kind of spreadsheet with different requirements uh, for, for each department and uh, in a specific view, a specific spreadsheet for horizontal requirements for each department. And this is some kind of, of surveys that you can uh, ask to be filled by stakeholders, managers, or any people that has some kind of decision uh, power inside uh, the, the, each business core for, for your company. And then you, you, you could help them to, to create some kind of gap analysis. So what you have now, what you could help with a new platform, with these new frameworks, with these new technologies, and you also, it could be easier also to estimate the effort of this of this change, and then the project scope. So, and this is very important to to start with with the, the with the right first step. For example, we want to uh, resolve the most critical issue, the most critical process that we have uh, actually, the most critical um, repository. We want to migrate the most populated repository, for example. So you have to help them to, to you have to find the, 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 the right goal for the first steps of, the, of your project. And typically it could be useful to resolve the most critical issue that, that, that you have. Just start from there. Uh, then you have to plan a, some kind of technology assessment. And uh, depending on what you have to do or what you want to do inside your project, for example, you Practically, you typically need to define a content life cycle. So this means that you could manage some contracts, for example, or any type of content, for example, images, videos, and you could put some life cycle on that. This means that, for example, a contract can be searched for five years, and after five years of uh, um, of the, of, um, of life of all these contents, the content could be archived, for example could be removed. So try to define immediately for each type of content um, its own life cycle. It's absolutely important also for the storage. I mean, if you consider search, search indices, for example, you, you, could, you, you can um, define a policy for, for the storage for your search engines that you have in the project. And the migration also. The migration is typically underestimated every time. So the, the migration is a, a side project, but I mean, it's a project and it should be absolutely considered immediately for your project. Then you typically, you, you have a UX, you have to define a new UX and you have to build, depending on your platforms that you are adopting some extensions and you have to typically create some middleware. If you want to, for example, to introduce a cloud uh, architecture, if you need some kind of asynchronous management for your data. Then you have the development. So um, typically now for your digital transformation project, you have an identity management, content services platform, a process services platform, and a big data platform, for example. But you have to implement the extensions for each platform. And then 
uh, integrations and then unit integration tests. So some kind of um, macro tasks that you have to consider every time. And then the rollout. So the rollout means that you are going production and uh, uh, you, you have to take care about uh, testing. So unit integration tests are very important. And um, the maintenance also for your platform, you, you have to define the backup policy, restore policy, upgrade policy, and how, and uh, be sure that your system administrators can leverage all the knowledge about this stuff. And for, and I suggest you to um, internalize all the knowledge about also um, the, the development for, for your platforms. I know it's, it could be a, a lot of effort, but if you have some internal developers that could put their fingers on, on your platform, you, you will have a lot of benefits and you will also have the opportunity to contribute back in the open source. Um, at the end also, you have to provide some user training for who needs to manage the content and uh, the collaboration staff, for example, and your final users. The, the evolution of your platform is, is very important. So you could have an upgrade strategy depending on the platform itself. For example, each vendor has a, some kind of roadmap that, uh, for, for outfixing, but also for improvements. And, um, and you have to take a look at that roadmap, absolutely. We have different environments and also the operating system, your DBMS system uh, could have uh, a specific roadmap to, to follow. So we, we have a lot of stuff to, to, to define to follow and you you can create a documentation about all this stuff and then try to involve the right people because the digital transformation project you need to set up a team of uh, of people that could, should play each each person should play uh, a specific role and uh, in this way you, you should cover all the typical issues that uh, could be you, you could you could see in the project. Um, depending on your organizational change, you could also need uh, probably uh, new extensions. For example, if you, in a new organization, you need uh, to manage uh, a new part of your core business, or new functionalities, new applications, or simply new, new users are um, coming uh, using the, the, the platform. So you probably need to scale out. And for example, to, to have new members for your cluster and uh, and change your cloud services architecture, for example. And uh, so practically, the, the methodology itself is uh, is absolutely, is a friend of, of the technology. So the technology is just the, a detail because the, the business here is uh, is the king. And the technology can do anything. So the, 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 the most important suggestion that I can share with you is try to um, take care of the vision of your project. Uh, and, you and you should wrap up a vision for the next five years, for the next 10 years, if it is possible, to arrange the correct technology architecture for, for the project. That, that, that's not easy. I know that it's not easy, but it could absolutely simplify a lot of a lot of chaos because uh, uh, during uh, the development of a project, sometimes uh, it's it could be hard. For example, find the, the the right person for a specific role because you could have a project owner that should uh, uh, keep all the project uh, uh, healthy. Um, you could have uh, a compliance manager or a, co or a quality manager for for your for the processes, and sometimes. Uh, for some roles during uh, the development of the project, can, 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 you, it can happen also that uh, these people can change their role during the, the development of the project, during the, 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 the gathering requirements phase, for example. So uh, you could have an unsupported platform. So it means that you, you could have uh, actually, you, you, you could have a first iteration that it's not resolving your problem for different um, different reasons. Um, and typically you could have a poor requirements understanding because um, you could have technical people that are not so familiar with your core business, for example, 
Uh, but uh, the, the most critical part here is again the, the, the migration. So the migration is absolutely um, typically is underestimated. <laughs> and we, this is what I see because uh, um, we have different uh, kind of contents to, to consider. We have different softwares. For example, typically we have the content, we have the process, so workflow instances, we have functionalities and authorities. This means that we have different kind of storage also. And, uh, and each specific vendor, or each specific platform can have different uh, type of architecture for, 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 each, one, uh, for each one. And um, also for the entity management, so different platforms have different storage systems, different architecture. So try to arrange a document and try to um, do an assessment about these could help absolutely on uh, um, before starting with your project. Um, in terms of processes, there are some best practices to design the process. So typically we have just these four, um, these four practices that can help you on designing process. The typical approaches are the four eyes principle. So the typical, typically you want that the content should be moderated, should be uh, so by two persons. Uh, we have the escalation. This means that if a task is taking too long time, you want that some kind of escalation. This means that the, the flow should, uh, the, the task should be assigned to another user that could take care about this delay, for example. We have the recovery loop. So this means that you have to uh, some tasks that are repeating the same, uh, the same, the same branch of your workflow. And uh, typically, it, it's absolutely useful to avoid to create some um, technical tasks. So, so typically, in your process, should be included only significant tasks. So this means that your process should include only stuff related to the business, not to the technical stuff. So this is absolutely important. Uh, in terms of unsupported platforms, you you probably during the first the first phase, the first iterations, you could have different metrics because when you deploy the new platform, you probably you will ask for some kind of feedbacks, and you will track them. You will track these feed, feedbacks every time. And uh, iterating different times, you probably we, we will resolve every uh, every problem. So the agile approach is absolutely um, good. Um, you you can absolutely iterate on different sprint for each specific department, and you will arrive at the goal. The different the the most hard. Um, task to do is estimate everything at the first stage. So that's the problem. So the, the initial assessment is very important to collect all this information. Um, the poor requirements understanding is another, another typical issue. So you have to collect all the requirements, try to write your guidelines for for your project and uh, your stakeholder views. So the, the stakeholder views are a set of questions for your stakeholders inside the company to collect every functionalities, every current issues that they can have actually at the moment with the current systems. And uh, you can collect some um, useful information for the new platform. And um, then you, you you can match everything with uh, with a matrix, for example, with your with all uh, your requirements, and then you, you can reshare the vision with 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 everyone involved in the project, the project owner, the champions, the stakeholders. So all this stuff should be done before starting implement. So that that's the 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 most important part. And during the the, the first iteration it is probably useful to reiterate also this, uh, this part for two or, or three times. It strongly depends on um, how many requirements, how many technologies are involved. And so it strongly depends on the complexity of the overall project. So again, involving the right people is absolutely important. And uh, defining some uh, um, Protocol communication is very useful. 
for example, so the project owner should be the first person uh, to contact for every uh, every problem, or for example, um, try to um, nominate someone that could take care about all the technical uh, support, for example. So try to design your communication protocol because there, there is no uh, special best practice about this. So uh, practically, you only need to define a communication protocol that could be absolutely useful. Uh, and then give a, the vision of your of your project. So it strongly depends on your business culture. So take a snapshot of your current state and uh, mm, try to map all your organizational change for your uh, digital transformation project, trying also to automate everything. Try to automate everything that should be, um, that actually is not automated, for example. Um, then you, you can also try to define the technology culture. Uh, this means that you you have to collect the current internal skills that you have in your in your in your team, um, and then collect every specific technology, data sources, every system that you are using at the moment, and then the user experience. So what we, you are what are what are you using now, and what you want to use for for the future. So the, these practices will help you on defining and estimate everything. So you have to seek and collect everything. So technically speaking, everything. And also uh, for in terms of business, in terms of uh, core business, you also map exactly the same way, what you have now and what you want to achieve in terms of metrics, KPIs, for each department, for each functionalities. If you have critical issues, try to start from them. That could be absolutely useful. Also, to um, justify your investment on your new on your new uh, digital transformation project, so it could be absolutely useful to justify the investment at, at the beginning. The stakeholder views is absolutely uh, up to you in terms of uh, uh, writing the documents, writing the spreadsheet, for example, um, and, and try to ask the stakeholder for all the issues. All the, all, the, all, the, all the problems that actually uh, they, they, they could have, uh, ask for improvements, which improvements you, 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 you propose for, for, your, uh, for your specific department, for example. Um, in, in terms uh, um, of technologies, obviously, uh, the, the, the response is the open source actually at the moment. So the open source is bringing innovation. And uh, the most important thing that you can do actually is um, defining your goals in terms of KPIs. Try to resolve all the bottlenecks, for example, if you have some kind of process, uh, some processes that they have some kind of bottlenecks. This means that you are uh, losing some time for, for each um, specific process for that uh, department, for example. And um, bring the skills internally. That, that could be absolutely useful. Um, acquire knowledge on, on open source technologies, and you have to choose your open source platform. So I'll try now to um, uh, to bring you an example of how a, a digital transformation project can evolve um, with the different requirements. Um, the, the suggestion here is to choose open source, commercial open source, if you don't have internal team with a specific IT knowledge, uh, because you have the support for, from the vendor, from partners. And try to choose um, platforms and technologies that uh, uh, that has a, a strong community. So you have also community members that can help you and also uh, choose some vendors that have a huge partner network or at least geographically near to you. That could be, that could be useful in terms of a, um, enterprise and critical contexts. Um, let's start with uh, just, uh, just an example. Uh, I mean, you have collected everything. So you probably uh, now, you are defining your, your project. So let, let's start with some uh, basic technology stuff. So let, let's try to start with a POC, with a basic application with SQL. So um, let's start with uh, the, the HTTP server with uh, 
some front end uh, uh, applications, for example, with struts, wicket, uh, with devices, if you have a domain driven, um, some domain driven requirements. So you, your user interface is absolutely uh, aligned with, uh, with your business case uh, or some portals, for example. And we have uh, the back end uh, system created, for example, with, with Apache struts. And we have a relation database with Apache database, very, very simple architecture, then um, you have a, an improvement of your um, of your digital transformation project. So probably you have some social capabilities, social uh, functionalities, and you have to provide also some uh, different devices for, for your uh, for accessing your, your project. This is just an example, just to make you uh, make clear that the digital transformation can evolve on different requirements provided by the business. Okay, so it's just an example of the complexity. And uh, here we have uh, the mobile applications. We have um, the CouchDB for NoSQL. We have Cassandra for GraphDB. If you practically need some queries on uh, relations between the contents. Um, another iteration can be content services. So you probably need to have the second stage and a second step. Um, Mostly here, we are using Sling. That means that we are using Jackrabbit Hawk. It is a content repository um, for managing every, every content, so documents, images, and, and so on. Um, then we need identity services. So here, I have added Apache Syncop for, um, as an identity provider. Uh, this means that your users has some password stored in your, for example, in your held up server, your active directory server. Um, another iteration can be search services. So uh, you, you have a huge amount of content and you practically, you need some search strategies. So you have to build some uh, um, search indexes. And here we are using uh, um, Solar, which is Solar with, with Lucene, which is Lucene. Um, with your application uh, integrated with uh, uh, the REST API of Solar, that helps you on executing queries. Then you could have migration services. So this means that you have some legacy repositories, legacy databases, and you want to migrate this content or you want to build your search indexes, for example, on Solar, you can use Apache Manifolds here to, uh, to execute these jobs for crawling legacy systems and uh, populate, for example, MongoDB, a MongoDB database and or a CMIS content repository, for example. Another iteration can be cloud services. So you have a, a, a huge request uh, from the business. You want practically to provide different services to your customers directly from your platform, for example. And then you can use OpenWISC with, uh, with Kafka for providing a cloud services architecture. And uh, so we have uh, here a very complex architecture. This is just an example. So uh, I'm not uh, defining every component, but just the, the main blocks. So we have Apache Kafka for managing the asynchronous events that are collected from these applications, from these backend applications, that could be everything practically. Then you, have, you need some big data services in a, another stage. So practically you want to collect this data. So all these events collected by these services, then you want to do some analytics on it. Then you can use Apache Hadoop for collecting and Apache Spark for doing some analytics. Um, I mean, if you try to approach a similar project without collecting the right strategic information for your business, so you, you, it could be absolutely tricky <laughs> to, uh, to approach this kind of project. So, Mm, you, you have to follow some best practices. And these best practices, so I try to summarize these best practices because are collected by experts all over the world. And um, that's my final suggestion. Don't start implementing immediately. So change your point of view. If you have some issues with you, trying to understand how your business can be matched with, uh, with some technologies, so try to change your point of view, it's, it's, it's useful. Um, build the ECM's program strategy. So collect all the information that uh, we, we have seen now. Uh, ask for feedback to, to your stakeholders. 
for example, really try to um, communicate with everyone involved in the project. So not only technical people, just the business people should be involved. And um, no, no, it could be. often I see that uh, the, the business people is not involved at the initial stage. That could be absolutely um, wrong, a wrong approach. Um, iterate vertically on each business cases because you have to adopt uh, um, absolutely this uh, iterating approach. Um, create unit integration tests because the modern platform are based on a microservices architecture. So you have to you have to educate or educate yourself. <laughs> try to educate yourself to um, to plan to plan uh, the development of unit integration tests and then contribute back in the open source. That could be absolutely good for everyone. Um, here we have some some references. So we have uh, uh, the the ECM program strategy toolkit. We have the Mike two met methodology. We have uh, the two ISO standards related to digital transformations. I mean the most important, the most generic, and then uh, the link from the Apache Software Foundation if you are interested to adopt some of that bricks that I shown you uh, before. Um, here I leave you also my contact, so my Apache mail, my blog, uh, my Twitter account, and uh, the company. Uh, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Pier Giorgio, for your presentation, and thank you for the people assisting to to this talk. Uh, just to remind you that uh, you can ask questions uh, through q a we just are out of time but we finished late on on the last one uh, so you can ask uh, directly uh, raising your hand or through the q a um i just want to remind you that there is the last talk in uh, english uh, from 7 to 7 45 uh, central europe time with Astor Numeling Kalbern, the political challenge and opportunities for open source in, in Europe. So if no one has any questions, I don't know if you want to add something, Pier Giorgio. Um, anyway, if you don't have any questions, don't, don't be shy anyway later because you can contact me absolutely. Uh, no problem for me. And uh, I know that the, the, there were a lot of contents in my, in my presentation. And I try to um, summarize two different things, methodology and technology. But uh, I know that it could be not easy to um, to get all this content in, uh, in just a few minutes. So don't be shy and contact me later. And thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much. I don't know if uh, John uh, wants to come here on the stage with uh, Pia Giorgio, or I'm not sure you are here or, or not. If you are here, just put your camera and micron. It's uh, a pleasure to have you here. If not, there is no problem. So uh, as I told you right now, there is the last conference uh, in the room, uh, uh, Oracle MySQL, uh, the political challenges and opportunities for process in uh, Europe with Aston Emling and John just came here. Hello, John. Hi, John. Hello. I am here. I, I really don't have much to offer, so I'll just wait for the next conference. Okay, so the next conference is in, in the other room. You have to switch from <laughs> from this room to uh, MySQL, uh, Oracle MySQL. I will uh, just uh, put an announcement uh, so you can click on the link or in the down part on the screen, you can go on the link. And uh, we have the last uh, day tomorrow of uh, Open Expo. Europe uh, virtual experience uh, with uh, four rooms, uh, three in Spanish, one in English. Today we have two in English and two in two in Spanish. And uh, in the English room, we started at uh, six uh, from uh, six, sorry, uh, four o'clock uh, Central Europe time with jazz automating code creation at scale, and then all building a strong open source culture is source is your key to top software engineering talent with Tabel Langel. Branding, why following trends might not be strategy. 
with Eva Zarawi. And uh, then we will interview Devrup Mitra, it's uh, OSPO at uh, HP, uh, HP Enterprise, about security challenges in open source law well and legal implications. So a great uh, panel tomorrow too uh, in the uh, Oracle MySQL room. So see you at uh, seven o'clock in Oracle MySQL room if you want to follow the the the, the chat and to follow with uh, the next conference. Thank you very much, Pian Giorgio. Thank you, Ho. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.